What's going on guys? Today we're going to show you how to replace your knock sensor on your pet car engine. If you have a Kenworth or a Peterbilt with a pet car engine in it, then you're going to run into some knock sensor issues and we are going to show you how to replace them yourself and save a lot of money. It's not too bad to do, so let's get to it. Hi guys, here we are. This is the 2015 T660 pack car engine. As you notice, we are on the passenger side. And uh, right here is where we're going to be working. So, we'll show you guys how to take this thing out of there and put a new one in. Alright guys, right here is your knock sensor. As you can follow the cable around, it's probably going to be all zip tied together. We've already got them cut off. If you'll notice, right here, there's an aluminum looking box and your knock sensor is going to be down inside of there. You can see right there is the top of it and it's going to have bolts that go through it. Let's get you all over here where you can see. So I have bolts that go through it. It's going to be a 13 millimeter and you'll take those two bolts out and you can unplug it. Let me get the new one out. And I'll show you guys what that looks like while Wild Bill is wrestling with this one. All right, here's how your new one's going to come. It's going to come in a box like that. Rip open your super moisture barrier bag. Get it out of there. All right, as you can see, this is the part where it bolts up. Got the two bolts on it. Just one plug here. Just have to plug up, and uh, this is the part that I was showing you where it screws in. So we'll get those two bolts out of that one and show you how to get all this stuff loose and what all you need to finish the job. All right, as you guys can see, what Wild Bill does after he gets the two bolts out. He dropped it down out of the aluminum box to get it on the bottom so he can unplug the plug. The next thing you're going to need, what we've got is a half inch drive. This is an oxygen sensor socket. It's 22 millimeter. The way that works. Just go right on there like that. You can see the wire can still come out the side. Everybody's happy. You can do it with a crow's foot or a regular wrench, but an oxygen sensor socket will make your life way more better. So we will show you guys what to do next. All right, there you can see where it's at. The little yellow tab has to slide up so you can unplug the sensor from the bottom. And Bill's gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna try to keep the camera in here. Alright guys, you can see that little yellow tab just slides up and unplugs. So we got that done, so we're ready to go to the top side. Yep. And that's all they are to taking the old one out. Here's the new one. And we'll do it the same way. Uh, one tip I want to give you guys on this, make sure you put never seize on it because it will get stuck in there. If you go replace it again, you're going to have a hard time getting it out. And we'll never see, she'll come on out of there most of the time. Uh, another tip I can give you guys, and some of y'all is going to flip out, but hear me out before you do it. 
if it don't want to come out and it feels like it's fixing to pull the threads loose, run the truck, get the truck good and hot, come back in here and you can take an impact. <gasps> and you can take an impact with that same socket on it and just bump it and it'll break it loose most of the time. Want it, Bill? Yes, sir. Everybody thinks crazy you use impact, but does it work? Just barely bump the trigger on it. Alright, so we're gonna get the never sneeze put on the new one and we'll show you guys how to stick her back in the hole. Run her back up in there. Make sure you use some never seize or anti seize or Whatever you want to call it, but just make sure you use it. And just make sure you put it on the threads. Don't rub it all over everything. So that stuff will get everywhere, won't it, Bill? Yes, sir. You see, it don't take much. Then just make sure to put it back in that little box or plug it up and then put it back up in the box. Put your two bolts back on it and you are good to go. That is how you replace your front knock sensor or inlet knock sensor or the knock sensor before catalyst, whatever you want to call it or whatever your scanner may call it. That's what it is. Anyway, guys, hope this video helps you. It'll save you a lot of money because they're going to eat you up in labor. The part itself is pretty expensive. It's around $450 to $500 for the part, but the shops are going to charge you several hours of labor. This will save you a lot of money. Like always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe down here below, and we will catch you guys next time. Y'all have a great one.